All right, ladies and gentlemen, so tonight's a big, big night. Big night, tremendous night. So Trump is just losing the elections. So we're gonna look at how to program the QCC 3008 Bluetooth module. Right, these come in uh, several different flavors, but uh, this happens to be the one I'm using for Bluetooth modding car radios. Uh, we'll also take a very quick look at uh, how to program the uh, CSRA 64215. So that's mainly going to be in the links in the description. I'll uh, post all the software you need for this. And it's pretty much the same process. You just need different versions of programs. So only one of the programs, PS Tools, is going to be compatible between these two. Uh, the rest are going to be uh, separate. And so basically what you'll first need is a CSR USB SPI programmer. Looks something like this. I think I have two different variants. Are they? Yeah, slightly. Uh, there's, there's some that do not have the pinout or that have different pinouts. But um, anyway, these should all work. Uh, you can actually use an FTDI breakout uh, serial uh, thingamabob. Those are very cheap. These are about $10, $15. The other ones are about like $1, $2. But um, uh, I do recommend actually getting, getting the, sorry, getting the proper uh, programmer because you will want to know where your pro problems are coming from, right? If you have a weird uh, makeshift driver, which I have heard works wonderfully, but you will never know, is it, is it the driver? Is it my breakout programmer, thingamabob? With this, you can know for sure that, right, you've connected something wrong or your Bluetooth module is dead or stuff like that. So anyway, the way I would recommend connecting to these if money was not an option or if you were doing this uh, professionally, as technically I'm doing, you can buy these, um, you can buy these pogo pin uh, claw programmer thingies. These are very nice. And they're about uh, fifteen dollars, and uh, they fit perfectly over the uh, over HYT board breakouts, right? So you hit that snap into place. Again, HYT does compatible stuff. Uh, other vendors might uh, might differ. So right, I know that not not long ago I uh, did not have one of these two hickeys. I did want one for like three years. And so what I did until then is actually solder onto each module. And uh, just to show you guys, that's not a big deal. I will be doing this in this video. All right, so first let's connect to the, um, so we're gonna connect to the uh, QCC 3008. This is a five volt isolated module. Okay, so now that you have your clusterfuck of wires and the CSR USB SPI programmer, now comes the moment of truth. We will be connecting it to 5 volts, well, 3.3. And, uh, yeah, seems to be alive still, which is quite surprising. Let's see if it got recognized. So we'll move this to a small corner. Uh, let's, for example, have it here, shrink this down, mainly talking to myself in the future now who's going to be editing this video. And so the first thing we'll want to do is launch PS Tool, right? And this is very, very easy to install. And if you see this, something happened. This is not good. So just try reconnecting and connecting it back up. And we're not hearing the Windows chime, which is a problem. Um, we might have connected this too early. And again, the software is really not polished. So you oftentimes need to let Windows finish booting, which in this case it has not. It's still doing quite a lot of shit. So uh, we'll let this boot completely. You saw it refresh the desktop. This is a virtual machine running on a pretty old laptop, about five years old. Uh, so let's let's actually try again. If not, you might have to restart your computer. Again, not running this in a virtual machine will be a lot better. Uh, for running it in a virtual machine, you will need to uh, go to settings, go to ports, USB, 
and add add your device right you can see now it's not connected if I do connect it it will appear here and you will have to add it here actually I think this is why it's not working uh, this is a different this is the other one I showed you guys uh, product ID hmm. seem pretty similar serial number is different yeah so the serial number is different so you saw we had to add it here go to USB 3.0 if you have this uh, plus and just just do this and now it should work so let's go back and try again all right we heard the chime that's good PS tool and boom we have it click OK again this has to be SPI BCCMD OK and this is good can hit read a couple of times um, and from here you can basically mostly change the name right this you can definitely change to something else so let's just say Bluetooth now let's just say QCC 3008 tutorial and you need to hit set right this this writes to the flash Right, so basically writes to this memory here, right, this one over here. And this one is read at boot and stored into the RAM of this chip, right? And so even though we have written a different name, this will still advertise itself as QCC 3008 TWS. Which, by the way, stands for True Wireless Stereo. What you need to do is uh, hit reset blue core. This is what BC stands for. And I will bring a second phone in the shop and we'll see if the name, uh, name worked. Okay, so we have my phone in shot. And let's see if this works. QCC tutorial, boom. And we can connect to this. So let's do this now and you'll see the blinking change. There you go. And now we are connected. Okay, so uh, we'll use this a bit later. Until then, let's uh, see the rest of the stuff you're, you're going to be doing here. So first of all, if you do anything else outside of changing the name, you will have to, you must, create a dump. Right now what this means is a full snapshot of the settings, right? So this is what a dump means. You dump the contents of the flash memory onto your computer. Uh, so let's just say isolated five volts stock, right? And this will take a short while, about 20 seconds. Okay. Uh, so now we have basically a stock uh, set of settings, right? This looks basically just like a key value pair, right? So this would be the key and this would be the value. And uh, yeah, or actually no, this is the key. And this is the, no, this is the key and this is the value. And this is just a comment that says what this is. Anyway. Keep in mind that most of the changes you will be making with the config tool and the front end will be additive in nature. So what this means is if I create an equalizer, simply a new line, right, a new line of something something with some value will be created. You cannot remove stuff from this uh, persistent store of values. So I'm going to exit out of this and show you guys how to remove stuff. So if you want to revert some changes that you have done here, it is not enough to merge, right? So the other option is to merge and you can select a dump, right? A PSR file. The problem is this basically overwrites the values that are found here with the values that are found on the chip. But if your chip has more lines, more key value pairs than this, they will still remain there and will still be read and will still take effect. So what you have to do to remove stuff whenever you want to go back is hit factory restore all 
This will change everything. You can see if you reset the blue cord now, it will have this weird blink. Let me just cover the light for a little bit. And so it'll have this weird psychedelic link, uh, blink. It will not work in this mode, mind you. And so anyway, you wanna go back and hit merge with your stock dump and this will bring it back to working order. If you still can't do this, try powering it up with some of the pins connected to the common. So some of the input pins connected to the common, which is the 1.8 volt line of the chip. So do not tie the buttons to ground or to 3.3. You need to tie them to 1.8 and it will accept new firmwares in some cases, right? If you've bricked it massively, you can try that. And I have had mild success with this method. Although I must say I did brick some of these myself. Okay, so now it's again named tutorial. So let's hit reset blue core. And the blue core should reset. Sometimes it doesn't. And in those cases, you have to just unplug it, plug it back in, and it does. Refresh the iPhone. And let's see. Boom. This is the advantage with Bluetooth 5.0. It does appear in these menus a lot quicker and it does connect at boot a lot quicker. So let's see that in action. Let's wait for it to appear as disconnected. I think it says not connected. All right. And contact. Boom. So that is pretty quick. <clears throat> um, yeah, what else can you do in PS2? I think that is pretty much all that you can do in PS Tool. I mean, you can definitely edit absolutely anything. I also actually use it to edit the addresses. So do make sure if you have multiple projects. Um, so we'll have to hit reconnect. All right, so the USB is not plugged in all the way. And this is also a pretty steep gotcha, which has bit me in the ass in the past. So anyway, we can go back to reset. Uh, to the Bluetooth address and read and you can change this so this you can lower address part you can change freely upper address part bit less freely and um, I don't know what N stands for actually I forgot uh, but that's the OEM address part and that basically tells uh, it's basically like uh, similar to ports on Windows I think uh, so ports in general and networking, so it kind of knows what type of device to expect. So this I wouldn't really change, but this I have changed massively, and I think also this. And they're fine. I've, I've had no problems. I don't know if it creates problems. Do your own research if you are running something uh, in production. So, yeah. <clears throat> anyway. So I think this uh, wraps it up for the um, PS tool. I'll be doing a separate video for the config tool. Uh, config tool is used for um, setting up uh, GPIO events, controlling the LEDs, controlling functionalities such as whether the microphone is enabled or not. And the universal front end is basically to uh, set up the Kalimba DSP, which is present in most, if not all, of CSR and now Qualcomm's bluetooth uh, solutions so that's a pretty powerful dsp which you can set over here so equalizer bass boost all that kind of shit all right so this wraps it up for this video and i'll see you guys in the config tool and in the front end videos and again as always if you have any questions leave them down in the comments